Harbour, isn't it? Uh, 16 minutes to 7, our main headline this morning. Winds of up to 99 miles per hour have hit parts of the UK overnight as Storm Isha causes major disruption to travel and leaves tens of thousands of people without power. Drones have become uh, an important weapon for both sides in the Russian war against Ukraine. Ukrainians are being encouraged to assemble them at home as well as take part in free pilot lessons. With major military aid packages currently blocked in both the US and European Union, President Zelensky has promised to make a million drones within the country this year. Our Ukraine correspondent James Waterhouse has been to see what difference they're making in the southern Kherson region. It's not often you see territory occupied by Russia with the naked eye, but on this approach to the Dnipro River, you can. We're heading towards the Antonivsky Bridge, once used by retreating Russian forces at the end of 2022. We're meeting the 11th Brigade of the National Guard, which deals in air reconnaissance. And in these parts, that means forcing Russian troops back with attack drones. We just had some incoming fire. When you're this close to the river, which is a front line, you are always watched through drones in the sky or from the Russians themselves, so you have to move quickly. Okay, they want us to go down here. This is our guys at the pilots. This is our... Inside, we meet Timur, the commander of his Samasu drone squad. From this location, we try to restrain the enemy's offensive and any movements. With one FPV drone that costs from $400 to $600, you can hit a target that will be a hundred times more expensive than a drone. We've moved from the hostile exterior through some double doors into what feels like a living room initially. But there's a deep, striking military feel. We have drone pilots sat in armchairs in front of two TVs with what looks like a console controller as a can of energy drink and on the floor here are a dozen or so drones carrying artillery shells. We've now received information that several enemy FPV drones have taken off from a location we know we're flying there right now. So the pilot is navigating his drone. You can see the propellers either side of the view. He's moving through the low-lying marshland, which sits on the eastern bank of the Dnipro River. And it's essentially a mirror image. He's trying to find the equivalent on the other side of the river. So that's hit. So you've just destroyed an enemy antenna. What effect does that have on the Russians? We've destroyed their drone control system, and now they won't be able to fly in our direction. The voice of Artem, a drone pilot. So how does he feel now? The first times I hit the enemy or their equipment, I was more emotional than I am now. Now this is business as usual. It's work. That's it. It takes 14 hours of flying to essentially become a drone pilot in this war. They're practicing with plastic bottles, which imitate the grenades that they will drop on the enemy. And only a few kilometers from here, they're being used for real. Stitch is the commander of a drone unit in the territorial defense, and he oversees the training. What are you seeing on the other side of the river? The ability to advance is currently difficult for both sides. The enemy troops are exhausted, and so are we. But we are now increasing the number of pilots and drones, and we are not allowing the enemy to approach the shore. Can you explain how important drones have become? This is a new type of war ongoing now. We are currently engaging in an active battle of technologies, an arms race. During the First World War, aviation was born, so now we are starting the future war of drones, which in two decades may simply turn the tide of any war. 
fascinating uh, report from uh, James Waterhouse in Ukraine there. It's 11 minutes to 7. Let's turn to matters closer to...